Hello guys, hope you are well. So today we're actually going to move on to calculating lattice energy and I've put a statement up there to get you thinking. It says the enthalpy change accompanying a chemical change is independent of the route by which the chemical change occurs. Can you please tell me or think about what law that is referring to? Pause the video and make sure you come up with the right law. Hopefully you came up with Hess's law. It's very important because it is Hess's law that allows us to do these calculations because we can't actually get experimental data on lattice energy, but we can use uh, other enthalpy data in order to calculate it. If you look at page uh, 260 of your textbook, that's when they start going through these calculations and explaining them. And they use a couple of things that we won't be using or I won't be using. I'm going to teach you in my way. You're welcome to do it the book's way or my way. I do not care. I just think that the way they do it in the book means that when you try to do it like that in, that in an exam, it's going to take too much time. And we know how uh, difficult it is to get things done on time in chemistry exams. OK, so they will tell you to use this formula in order to calculate lattice energy. Okay, so we've got delta H theta lat, uh, lattice energy equals the um, enthalpy of formation minus delta H1, they call it, okay? Now, enthalpy of formation, of course, that's referring to whatever the lattice that you're actually actually having a question on, okay? So let's say, let's say it was NaCl, then obviously in forming solid, uh, there is a value available for the delta H of formation of NaCl, okay? And then you will subtract this value here, which is the delta H1, which is the enthalpy changes involved in changing the elements from their standard states to their gaseous ions, okay? That's a little bit of a mouthful, but in terms of actually understanding what that is, that's all the stuff we were doing for the last couple of lessons. In other words, that value here will come from uh, using your electro electron affinity understanding your ionization energy understanding and um, your enthalpy change of atomization in other words you're going to be using these types of enthalpies in order to calculate this enthalpy value okay Obviously, the delta H formation value is also available. So using all those enthalpies, you'll be able to calculate lattice energy. OK, now I'm not going to use this formula. I'm just going to think of it a slightly different way. And we'll crack on with that with an example. OK, so using Hess's law. Remember, it doesn't matter which way you do it, you're still applying the concept of Hess's law because it's that idea that allows you to use other values in order to get a value which is unable to be used. OK, so using Hess's law to calculate lattice energy of lithium fluoride. OK, so the way I would approach this is, first of all, just write the equation um, for the formation of that lattice. So there we have the equation. Uh, again, this is really just putting a definition into equation format. We've got um, one mole of lithium fluoride being formed from gase, scattered gaseous ions, okay? And that's what lattice energy is by definition. Right, so I'd start off by writing the equation. That would be my step one. And then let's just approach lithium as a starting point, okay? Now, what you're gonna to have to actually do to lithium in order to get this process done, what values are gonna to have to consider? Well, first of all, you've got to consider turning lithium from its uh, normal standard state, which would be as a solid, okay, into lithium gas. OK, and this is uh, by definition, we call this the energy or enthalpy of atomization. And then following that, you're going to have to convert this lithium into a lithium ion. Again, by definition, our lattice enthalpy is scattered gaseous ions. Um, so really, this is what we're going from. We're going from lithium as a solid to lithium as a gas to lithium as an ion. Um, and these obviously have enthalpy values, which we can we can take from our data book or hopefully from the question. Now you're gonna to have to do the same thing with fluorine. So I'll just circle fluorine in blue. 
I'm going to have to think about doing this with fluorine. Remember, fluorine, though, exists as diatomic in its standard state. So we've got F2. And if you want to form or atomize that just to make F, then we're going to have to be careful how we write it. You're going to need half F2 going into that. So we're going to need to do this process. Again, that has an enthalpy value. Remember, that would be known as the enthalpy of atomization. And then we've got ionizing that fluorine. OK, so we've got to make that as fluorine minus ions, again, as a gas. So all I'm doing really is showing you how you go from the standard states to actually forming the states that are represented in this lattice energy equation. Forgot to put my delta H value in there. And just to be very clear, I've only put these in as enthalpies, but remember this would be the enthalpy of atomization. I should put 80 in there. The same here, this would be enthalpy of atomization. This here would be an enthalpy of um, ionization. In other words, this is an ionization energy value. Okay, so that would be an I, and it's going to be the first ionization value because it's just taking that outer electron, just one electron. Now, this enthalpy value here will be an electron affinity value. Okay, so that would be an EA value, electron affinity value, because you're gaining electron, or it's the enthalpy of getting an electron. So we have all these enthalpy values available, and that's the real point here. That's available, that's available, that's available, that's available. Okay, so we can we can sum all those values. And of course, we have this value available as well. I'll just put that in a different color. The enthalpy of formation of lithium fluoride, just like any other ionic compound, you're going to you'll be able to get that from the data book too. OK, so we also have this value. Then similar to how we approach problems with Hess's law in Chapter six, I've said the easiest way to do this is just to sum everything up, just actually add up all the values. And just make sure you change the sign if the process is happening the other way around. OK, so you're going to add up all values and just think of it as if the process is happening the other way around, change the sign. OK, it's probably better if I just uh, explain that by actually doing it. It's going to make more sense. OK, so then you need to consult the data booklet and get all the relevant values or hopefully they'll actually just give you it in the question to save you kind of jumping back and forward between papers. So here are the different values for lithium. We've got enthalpy of atomization um, here. Then we've got ionization energy here or first ionization energy here. Then we've got enthalpy of atomization of fluorine. Um, electron affinity or first electron affinity of fluorine here. OK, so there you've got your values and then you've got your enthalpy of formation of lithium fluoride itself. And then again, my technique is just to sum everything. But switch signs if that is not the process that's actually happening. OK, so, for example, First of all, if we look at this here, we need to take lithium from being its standard state to being um, to being atomized. OK, now think of it like this, because this is on the left hand side of the equation. You're not actually doing this. So whatever this value is, I'm going to reverse it. OK, so this value here is one, six, one. I'm going to reverse that value. OK, that's because you're not actually doing that. You're effectively doing the opposite in terms of the energy. OK, you're doing effectively the opposite because it's this that we're actually producing. Um, then I take the next one, which is the ionization value of lithium, which is here. Again, we're not doing that either. OK, so I'm going to reverse that sign, too. Like so. Then we're on to fluorine now. OK, so we've done that and we've done that. We're now on to fluorine here. OK, so I need to sum up um, with the enthalpy of atomization of fluorine. Again, this is not something we're doing because it's on the left hand side of the equation. So again, in terms of the energy, I need to do the reverse energy. So this is going to be minus 79. Then the next one is actually forming fluoride ions. Again, this is something we're not doing. I reverse the sign. So that was minus 328, as you can see there. So and I'm changing that to plus 328. Oh, sorry, my bad, my bad.
No, nope, that's correct. I'm just confusing myself now. Okay, so I've reversed the sign there. Now, uh, our final value here is to add the enthalpy of formation. Now, in this case, this is what we're doing, so there's going to be no change to the sign here. Okay, so I'll just add on 617. Right, if you tot up all those values, you're going to get your lattice energy for lithium fluoride, which is minus 10, 4, 9, and obviously you need your units here. I haven't bothered putting the units in here because all the units are the same. And I knew I was going to put it in the end. So that's kilojoules per mole. OK, so just to recap, recap on my technique, effectively what I do, you've got to sum all the values up that are involved in actually doing this. And then I revert, effectively you can think of it like this. You can reverse the sign of anything happening on the left hand side of the equation because effectively you're not doing that. So you need the opposite energy change OK, or the reverse energy change. So you're going to reverse the value. Anything on the right hand side, you're going to keep the value the same. And uh, I'm doing it like this because that's how we did it in chapter six. And I don't really want to change the technique. Now, you are totally welcome to use the way that they're showing you how to do it in the textbook. You can also use the enthalpy cycles if you like. But I just think that you're going to waste a lot of time doing them. OK, so that would be my technique. And what I want you to do is your own example and try to work it out yourselves. And if you look at the end of chapter questions, the first question there gives you a list of entropy values. OK. And I only want you to do part B of that question, OK, where it says use the data in the table to calculate the lattice energy of potassium oxide. So the data is on uh, page... 270, so that's on 270, I'll write that down too. So it's page 270, it's question one of the end of, end of chapter questions, but I only want you to do part B. We're exclusively trying to see if you can do that calculation, okay? At the start of next class, I will go through this calculation and I'll also go through some more complicated ones that require slightly more thinking, okay? Despite the procedure being the same, they just need a little bit more thinking because there are a few areas where errors can slip in. Okay, have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.